In the vast and dark corners of the galaxy lurk terrifying creatures bred for a singular, chilling purpose, to hunt Jedi. Easily one of the most deadly monsters to the Force-sensitive were the bone-chillingly powerful Tarentatex. With a similar resemblance to Rancors, these creatures are identifiable for their large jagged spine growths, tusk-like projections from their mouths, and massive, highly venomous claws. The initial iteration of these formidable abominations emerged on Tython, the ancient homeworld of the Jedi. Their inception was to be born during the Despot War, when Jedi Master Quan Zhang sought to create a creature capable of detecting explosives, consequently leading to the alchemical creation of Tarentas. However, these creatures eventually acquired a preference for Force-enriched meat, redirecting their focus towards Force users. These fearsome creatures were originally engineered by a sect of Sith dedicated to crafting formidable war beasts, sometime before the year 16,899 BBY. However, a twist of fate occurred as these menacing creatures turned their aggression towards the Sith purebloods themselves. Rather than succumbing to their own creation, the Sith purebloods decided to harness the Tarentatex as weapons against their adversaries. The inaugural encounter with a contemporary Tarentatec unfolded amidst the lush wilderness of Drommund Kass in the year 4904 BBY, a time when the connection between the Tarenta and Tarentatex had faded into oblivion. During an expedition to clear a section of the planet teeming with jungle and aggressive wildlife, the human Odil Vakin found himself in a fierce battle against a modern Tarentatec. Some accounts suggest that the evolution of these modern Tarentatex took place on Korriban, where the pervasive influence of the dark side of the Force gradually warped their physical forms and twisted their minds. Additionally, whispers circulated that the Sith Lord Exar Kun dabbled in Sith alchemy to create Tarentatex. Notably, the hide of a Tarentatec boasted remarkable resistance, and in certain instances, even immunity to the Force's effects. This made them the most formidable among the creatures bred by the Sith, and garnered the Tarentatec the name of Jedi Killers. Indeed, Tarentatecs were themselves considered the most deadly by the Jedi. Kun strategically deployed these monstrous beings to obliterate Jedi outposts on Tatooine, Kashyyyk, and Tython, thus solidifying the Tarentatec as formidable adversaries in the ongoing cosmic struggle between the Sith and the Jedi. In the era of the Great Hunt, the Jedi embarked on a galaxy-spanning mission to eradicate these Tarentatex. Typically dispatched in pairs or trios, these Jedi hunters formed close bonds among themselves, seeking strength against the pervasive darkness that lured in the lairs of the Tarentatex. Armed only with their skills in weaponry, due to the Tarentatex exhibiting near-complete immunity to the Force, the Jedi faced daunting challenges. Consequently, and against their best efforts, none of the hunts achieved complete success. Fascinatingly, each apparent extermination triggered a resurgence of the Tarentatex, driven by the enduring influence of the Dark Side, marking pivotal moments during the ascendancy of Revan, Malak, and Emperor Palpatine. Indeed, the relentless presence of Tarentatex extended across various planets, including Tatooine, Kashyyyk, Onderon, Droman Kass, Tython and Yavin 4. In the midst of the Jedi Civil War, Revan and companions encountered and defeated a Tarentatec in Kashyyyk's Shadowlands, discovering its role in an ancient Wookiee ritual. A ceremonial beast from years prior, this creature held the remnants of Bacchus' ceremonial blade, a token retrieved by Revan. Venturing into the tomb of Naga Sadal, Revan confronted and vanquished two more Tarentatecs single-handedly. Across the galaxy, the menacing creatures found new battlegrounds, like the Shirak Caves on Korriban, near the entrance to the tomb of Ludo Kresh. Additionally, in 3678 BBY, Teneb Kel faced and conquered a Tarentatec on Lenico IV. A developed variant also surfaced in the tomb of Nagasadal during the Cold War, meeting its end at the hands of the recently freed Kem Val, who had been imprisoned in the same tomb. Spawned by the sentient Yuzang Vong species, the Voxin emerged as a genetic amalgamation. 
They were the result of crossing a Xin, a formidable hunting creature native to the Yuzanvong's homeworld of Yuzantar, with a Vonska, a hound indigenous to the planet Merka. All Voxin, with the exception of the Voxin Queen, shared an identical physical form, effectively clones of the inaugural queen created by the Yuzangvong. Reaching a height of about an average human's waist, mature Voxin stood at one meter and boasted a reptilian appearance with a length exceeding four meters. Their flattish heads featured a pair of oval yellow eyes and a broad snout filled with formidable fangs. Impressively, the Voxen had eight legs equipped with claws and exhibited keen eyesight in poorly lit areas, capable of seeing twice the distance of normal eyes in low light. Their round-pawed legs also housed toe pads, which carried a hundred lethal retroviruses, the medium being the green slime coating their claws. Sensory bristles ran down the creature's spine, complemented by a whip-like tail featuring a white barb imbued with Vonska-inherited poison. This toxin induced swelling and reddening of flesh for one to six days. Equally deadly, the barb could also deliver a neural shock, while the spine's bristles carried a potent neurotoxin affecting different species uniquely. Some experienced convulsions and eternal slumber, while other victims weakened gradually and eventually lost the ability to breathe or swallow. At its most brutal, some even drowned in their own saliva. Voxing tongues were also long and forked, equipped with an efflux tube that could shoot a jet of brown, acid-like saliva, burning upon contact. This lethal saliva, capable of easily killing a humanoid, could be drooled by Voxin outside of combat. Additionally, Voxin wielded the power of emitting a sonic blast from their snouts, inducing temporary hearing impairment, nausea, and eardrum shattering. With purple blood possessing neurotoxic properties, Voxin could move swiftly, jump great heights, and swim adeptly. While officially designated as non-sentient, these horrifying creatures demonstrated notable intelligence and a natural cunning. Their cleverness extended to practical actions, such as manipulating the activation stud of a lift tube or sensing when a trap was being set. As part of their training, Voxin were instructed to steer clear of triggered traps and potential hazards like fire once again enhancing their prowess as skilled hunters. In terms of temperament, human senator Viki Shish of the New Republic perceived Voxen as inherently vicious creatures that took pleasure in inflicting harm. This blend of intelligence, adaptability, and a relentless nature made Voxen formidable adversaries in various environments. Collectively, they mastered the art of survival and effective predation in diverse galactic habitats, from worlds like Kuat and Chiron all the way to Corellia. Even in the mechanical environments that most Yu Vong avoided, Voxin displayed comfort, a trait instilled in them from birth for hunting Jedi across any terrain. Voxin consumed Isalamir, humanoids, and even lone Yu Vong. Feral Voxin on the Banu Ras sought refuge in caves near the City of Slaves, with the supply of prey becoming their main primary source of sustenance. Voxin could also be manipulated and commanded by Yu Zhangvong warriors. Thus, all Voxin, excluding the Queen, received training to stalk Jedi, while the Queen herself focused on preserving the species. Hunting in packs of four, Voxin tracked Jedi while under the control of these Vong warriors who could direct the creatures for torture. These highly specialized handlers often accompanied these packs, managing leashes and making sure that the creatures did not break free. Fascinatingly, in the event that the Yu Vong lost a Voxin, the creature could still survive on its own and would inevitably turn feral. Terrifyingly, even feral Voxin would attack and harass Force Sensitives, despite not being ordered to do so by their masters. Crucially, the task of hunting and consuming Force Sensitives revitalized them, shaking off lethargy as they sensed prey. With their unique ability to detect Force Sensitives like Jedi through the Force, Voxin stood apart from other Yuzang Vong creations. Unlike the Force devoured Yuzang Vong species and their creations, Voxin could sense Force sensitives even if they lessened their presence in the Force, eliminating the possibility of Jedi concealing themselves from these relentless hounds. In turn, Jedi experienced the unsettling presence of Voxin through the Force, registering them as hungry driven or feral entities. 
Intriguingly, Voxin had the capability to occasionally sense the emotions of Force sensitives. Likewise, Force sensitive individuals, in rare instances, could also perceive more than just the creature's hunger through the Force. However, Voxin possessed the power to cloak their presence from Force sensitives, therefore rendering them undetectable and deadly assassins. Though some Jedi skilled in animal communication could attempt to influence Voxin through the Force, conveying ideas like attacking their Yuzang Rong handlers, this nonetheless proved incredibly challenging and rarely deterred the beasts. Indeed, these genetically engineered beings showcase exceptional resilience. Specifically, rapid healing abilities contributed to their durability, enabling Voxin to endure scenarios like being pinned beneath a metal bulkhead or surviving the blast caused by thermal detonators. Voxen could also function effectively despite the loss of limbs and chunks of flesh. Their scales, on occasion, even deflected blaster bolts. Even in the face of decompression, Voxen could create scale cocoons and survive temporarily in vacuum conditions by entering a deep hibernation. Historically, these terrifying abominations were introduced by 27 ABY and infiltrated numerous worlds, from Karelia to Kuat. Often partnered with groups of Yuzang Vong warriors, the Voxen scoured planets, moons, and refugee starships like the Nebula Chaser. The threat escalated with a daring but failed attempt to smuggle Voxen onto the New Republic's capital Coruscant, aiming to unleash havoc upon the Jedi leaders entrenched there. Unsurprisingly, the emergence of this formidable threat caught the attention of the new Jedi Order. Learning that the Voxen Queen played a pivotal role in their creation, the Jedi devised a strike team led by Anakin Solo to confront this menace. Commandeering the Yuzang Vong frigate's exquisite death, the Jedi infiltrated the Banu Res worldship. In a fierce encounter, they faced both the pack of Voxen accompanying Executor Nomanor and his warriors, as well as the feral Voxen inhabiting the Banu Ras. Despite suffering heavy casualties, including the death of Anakin Solo and the capture of his brother Jason, the Jedi team succeeded in eliminating the Voxen Queen. With the Queen's demise, the threat diminished and the short lifespan of the Voxen contributed to a gradual decline in their numbers. Thereafter, the galaxy breathed a sigh of relief as the formidable reign of these nightmarish creatures drew to a close. Another fearsome creature which often threatened the Jedi were the Battle Hydras, a reptilian-like creature and product of Sith alchemy. These monsters typically boasted two heads perched on long fluid necks, with yellow slits for eyes which epitomised their predatory nature. Terrifyingly, some variants manifested with even more heads, augmenting their dreadfulness. At their rear, the Hydras wielded a long, whip-like tail armed with a hooked stinger, a weapon made even more deadly due to it dripping with acidic poison. Their four powerful legs ended in hooked claws, sharp enough to slash flesh with ease, further showcasing their brutal capabilities. Encased in iridescent scales, their muscular torsos shimmered, altered at a molecular level by dark Sith magic. Crucially, their skin was infused with ancient Sith alloys to minimise damage from a lightsaber's strike. In stark contrast to their fearsome appearances, these beasts, when undisturbed, were mindless and predominantly solitary hunters which roamed the thermal currents in search of prey. Their attacks were swift and deadly, diving through the air to unleash their venomous stingers, snapping jaws and lethal claws. Once their victims succumbed, the battle hydra would then return to its lair to feast on the carcass. However, these creatures transformed under the influence of dark side force users, consequently turning the Hydras into personal shock troopers which attacked in numbers only upon such sinister commands. Centuries ago, the Sith Lord Exar Kun, delving into dark Sith sciences on Yavin 4, birthed the first battle Hydra through Sith alchemy as a fearsome guardian. Following Kun's demise in the Great Sith War, these Hydras receded into the shadows of deep mountain caverns and became a rare and elusive threat. They reverted to their predatory instincts, emerging only to hunt as the dark legacy of their creator's malevolent experiments. Forgotten for millennia, these creatures would eventually resurface to haunt the early days of Jedi Master Luke Skywalker's Jedi Praxium 
summoned by the dark spirit of Exar Kun to target Skywalker. A terrifying encounter with a three-headed variant nearly ended in tragedy, were it not for the intervention of Skywalker's nephew, Jason Solo. With Kun's influence extinguished, the battle hydras vanished and retreated from sentient contact, their fate still a mystery. It is theorised that these battle hydras may have possibly reverted to natural behaviours or simply died out, leaving behind tales of their nightmare existence. Another monster, which was without doubt one of the most horrific creations, were the Leviathans. These creatures stood as monstrous carnivorous reptiles, conceived as living superweapons to roam battlefields and harvest the life energies of their foes. These horrifying creatures began their lives as serpentine limbless hatchlings and were aggressive from the onset of their birth. As they matured, leviathans transformed into bipedal behemoths with four forelimbs and jaw-encircling tentacles, their skin tough enough to traverse lava fields unharmed. Their adult forms were not just a sight of terror, but a harbinger of death, equipped with blister traps on their backs to imprison and drain the life force and knowledge of their victims, leaving the prey aged and weakened. The mere presence of an adult leviathan was enough to interfere with the force and auditory hallucinations in force sensitives, making them hear non-existent screams. Their appearance was the stuff of nightmares, with a gaping maw lined with rows of sharp teeth, multiple eyes and nostrils, and the ability to project fire. Despite their massive size and brute strength, leviathans also possessed the speed to outrun their prey, using their blister traps to ensnare and drain the life energies of a diverse range of species. Yet, for all their might and terror, these beasts had only the cognitive intelligence of non-sentient creatures, viewing all other life forms as mere food. Controlled by dark Jedi through Sith amulets, leviathans were weapons of war unleashed with devastating effect on enemies in indiscriminate carnage. Created during the Hundred Year Darkness by Dark Side Alchemy, Leviathans were easily one of the most deadly of the numerous Dark Side spawn. Sorza Sin, a Dark Jedi turned Sith Priestess, was instrumental in their creation. These Dark Side spawn, unleashed by the Exiles to bolster their forces, eventually faded into obscurity after the Battle of Corbos, though remnants existed in obscurity and grew increasingly wild. However, their legacy persisted, with the Leviathan emerging from the shadows whenever colonists dared to tread on their domains, with entire settlements regularly vanishing without a trace. Their resurgence on Kesh under the control of Sith Lord Remulus Draper brought devastation, leading to a desperate battle that saw the Leviathans laying siege to the capital, their rampage only halted by their bravery and cunning of those who stood against them. In the era of the New Republic, the Leviathans were believed extinct. However, when a mining colony on Corbos awakened one such beast, it predictably unleashed havoc, devouring workers and challenging the newly trained Jedi of Luke Skywalker's order. The battle that ensued tested the Jedi's strength and ingenuity, ultimately leading to the Leviathans' destruction. These creatures, capable of laying waste to entire colonies, and striking fear into the hearts of even the most courageous were a dire reminder of the Sith's dark legacy, a legacy that would haunt the galaxy for millennia. That's all for today's monsters often cited for their role in hunting Jedi. Be sure to subscribe for our upcoming videos which delve into the more obscure Sith spawn creations. And as always, may the Force be with you.